Hey, folks, welcome back to Rugby Ascendant segment here on Chris White Africa and on the Rugby Ascendant channel itself. My guest today, and let's see if we get this right, because um, he says I do better <laughs> than most people. My guest today is Vikas Hrneval from South Africa. Close enough. Thank hey, you very much, Chris. So, nice so, to be here. So, how uh, goes it? It goes very, very good. Thank you. How with you? Oh, it's going pretty good with me. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. There you go. So folks, uh, if you didn't know he was from South Africa, there's kind of the tip off. Anyway, so Vikas and I met uh, at the uh, game earlier this season when I was invited down to rugby ATL in Atlanta there in Marietta, Georgia. I went down there and watched them defeat Los Angeles and quite a game that was. Uh, Vikas was in quite a, a jubilant mood after the game and uh, was kind enough to grant me an interview right there, right on the spot. We had a little fun. We had to find some space over by the trees because uh, <laughs> the light was all messed up and there was music playing and everything. It was really loud, but we found a spot and we got your reaction. Uh, well, let's talk about that game before we go any further, because we saw this weekend that the New Orleans team went to Los Angeles and defeated them. It was only the third loss of the season. They lost to Rooney, then they lost to you. Both were on the road after long trips across the country, so that might play a role. But this was at home, and Nola, a depleted squad that's lost a lot of players' injury, really played that game well and managed to pull it out. So let's talk about your game against L.A. What was that like that night? Um, like you said, I mean, obviously, afterwards, you're so jubilant and you've already got the adrenaline going and everything. It's, a, it, it's an amazing experience, you know, and uh, – Especially, I mean, I played against guys that I've known, I've seen play rugby when I was a little guy, uh, you know, a little kid. So that was an awesome experience, uh, scrumming against someone that I watched playing rugby growing up. Uh, just in general, the team environment, it's amazing. You know, that's kind of the best thing about the MLR for me is uh, everything, anything goes. You know, you're playing against, you might be playing against a guy from a club, you might be playing against a guy who's had super rugby caps, you might be playing an international guy, you know? Uh, and I think that's what makes uh, that game for us very special as well, having beaten those guys who've got these... Well, I, I, I think those guys always have a target on their back, um, being, you know, those caliber players. So, yeah, being in that game, having played the way we did, uh, it's a very proud feeling, I guess. But, you know, wary... Uh, you never, you never fully happy, and there's always a little bit to tweak here and there. So yeah, no, no, we we saw some good things in that game, and I think we'd be happy with the outcome. Well, I think that you clearly have, have taken to the Kool Aid that Coach Scott Lawrence is issuing to players about. We took some lessons from that game. I mean, you guys could win ninety-seven nothing. As Coach Lawrence's first comment would be, "Yeah, we, there's some lessons we learned tonight that we can improve on." <laughs> <laughs> I think some, yeah, you know, some guys might say it's a, he's a bit intense, but I think, I think that's just the way his head works. You know, there's, yeah. there's whatever we've been working on uh, to, to, to work. If it works, then it's just a job well done, you know, but there's always something else to tweak, uh, even if it's just in the system or an individual or whatever. So, yeah. I love his ethic. <laughs> no, I agree with you. And, and I, I say it tongue in cheek because 36 years in the army, I'm a bit of a perfectionist and uh, myself. So, <laughs> so I definitely appreciate that. Yeah, I definitely get that. But uh, let's see. You're, so you were are from South Africa and you grew up in Somerset West. Is that correct? Yeah. Well, no, actually, I was born in Somerset West. So, oh, okay. uh, I yeah, I grew up in a little town called Caledon. Yeah. Um, it's, it's in the Overberg, the heart of the Overberg. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. I mean, I, I grew up with watching the rain and, you know, having beautiful lush fields around me and all that. I was very, very lucky. Yeah, grew up in, in, in Caledon. I had to commute. We lived on a farm a, a ways away there. And from there, I went to Paul, played a bit of rugby for Paul Boys, uh, did some athletics, was very, very lucky after that to go to the Institute, which was in Stellenbosch, the Western Province Rugby Institute. Uh, yeah, and from there, it's just been a... Very lucky, very blessed, very happy. You know, sometimes obviously a bit of a bump and a bruise then on the way. But yeah, very, very happy to finally have ended up here in America. Well, if there wasn't a bump and a bruise on the way, it wouldn't be rugby. Then it would be soccer. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, they say it's the, wait, wait. Rugby is the hooligans game played by gentlemen. Right. Because I think the telling statement about rugby is that when the game was over, one team got slaughtered. I don't know what the score was. Let's say it was like 53 to, to nil or something like that. But when the game was over, everybody hung out. They had a bri. They they drank beer. They, they had a good time and people got along. It was none of this, you know, animosity that you see in other sports. And I think that's one of the strengths of rugby. Would, would you agree? Oh, definitely. I mean, it's it's a bit different, I'd say, in a in a like the professional environment. Yeah. 
Because I, I would agree with you that the animosity is definitely not there as in other sports. Uh, because we tend to play each other more than once, you know, uh, being my first season here, I feel like in the second game, the third game, you'd start to, to really have friends or like chums, you know, in the other team. Uh, but that's definitely the best part of it for me. Because on the field, me and Callum Gibbons, when we played DC the other day, we had a bit of a scuffle in a chat and, you know, it's just within the game, it, it happens. And then afterwards, smiled and, you know, shaking hands and everyone's happy. Uh, at the end of the day, you, you have such a big respect for the guy across from you. In the moment, it's war. But afterwards, you know, he's, he's something, someone that, that uh, took it upon himself to fight against you and do whatever. So, yeah, it's, it's a big respect thing, I think. Well, and, you know, it's interesting because when I was down there in Atlanta, I didn't even know this friendship was there. But uh, Mark O'Keefe from Ireland and DTH Vandemeva, of course, is Afrikaans Afer- parents, but uh, grew up in or is living in Canada. So he plays for Canada. Yeah. So DTH Vandemeva and Mark O'Keefe, they're like best buds after the game. They're over there chatting and everything. And it turns out they are friends. And I didn't realize the connection. Yeah. So I did ask I did ask Mark O'Keefe this when I interviewed him. I said, uh, so who dyed their hair first? Was it you or DTH? <laughs> yeah, well, oh, Marky. Marky is an interesting character any he day is, of the week. So. He is. He yeah. is at that. He's and he's he's an interesting guy. Fun to watch on a pitch. Fun to talk to. So, Paul, um, that would be the location of the only monument in the world dedicated to a language, the Afrikaans monument. I actually didn't know that it was the only one in the world dedicated it's to. All, but yeah, it's definitely one. that's flipping cool. I didn't know that. Thank you for uh, giving <laughs> me some information about my hometown. You know. Yeah. No, it's pretty cool. It's also, I, I, good. Yeah. No, sorry. Go ahead. No, I said it's pretty cool. I've been there. It's an interesting. It's an interesting monument because it shows the different contributions of the different sources that created, yeah. you know, that led to the language itself. But yeah, no, Paro, it's a beautiful spot, not far from Franschhoek and not too far from Stellenbosch. Beautiful location there. Yeah, two, two. I would say powerhouses, especially of South African rugby. Uh, in well, obviously, I'm a bit biased, you know, <laughs> <laughs> having been there myself. Uh, but yeah, me and one of my teammates, well, two of my teammates actually are, are from my opposite school, my opposition from Paul Jim, uh, in Johan Momsen and Ryan Null. Both of them were at Paul Jim, whereas I'm actually the only Paul Boys guy here at the moment. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a bit of a chat between us, you know, always a back and a forth. And, and well, unfortunately, the, last year we couldn't have our inter-schools, which is one of the biggest schoolboy rugby games in the world, uh, which is very sad. So hopefully maybe this year, who knows at this moment uh, with, you know, whatever is going on in the world, it's not really on the cards, but uh, we'll see what happens. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty crazy. I saw this morning, I reported earlier in my news program that the Springboks has suspended the training camp because Luke Diager tested oh, wow. positive. So, so now the game against Georgia on, on Friday is in, in question. It's up in the air. And then of course that Balance, raises, yeah. yeah, that raised the whole question about the rest of the British and Irish Lions tour. I'm sure they'll find a way to go through with it, but yeah, it's pretty crazy that he's the fourth Springbok to test positive. So oof, whatever protocols are using, maybe they need to pay closer attention to it. It's a shame. Hopefully this nonsense <laughs> will be past us and we can get back to a normal world because um, as you mentioned, uh, high school and varsity uh, rugby is amazing in South Africa, far bigger crowds oh, yeah. than Curry cup gets. <laughs> I'd say two of the biggest games that I've played was probably my my inter schools, which is obviously that the the first teams um, of those two schools, and definitely in Stellenbosch, the uh, university final playing there. It's also about twenty five thousand people. I mean, it's it's an amazing environment. Just Stellenbosch itself, with all the natural beauty around you in that stadium. You know, it's it's like an electric cooking pot. I mean, I, I can't you know describe it it's just a feeling that you have to you have to be there see it for yourself it's a whole different game when there's spectators in the crowd it's been an exciting season there it's been a big season um now when i asked for interviews for this week i asked for you because i want to get back to interviewing you uh but i didn't know you were going to score a try for me last time you played <laughs> my, my my girlfriend's been saying before every match you know just oh, come on just score me a try you know and I'm, every time i'm like yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. You know, if, if the opportunity presents itself, you take it. But as a prop, you don't really, you know, it's not really in the books. But It's uh, not yeah, in the cards really normally. <laughs> normally. But yeah, yeah, working hard, like I said, uh, obviously coming off a mall and the boys just working hard around the corner. And I was just the lucky guy. Uh, I didn't even realize, but I scored it under the posts. And I felt so good, you know. <laughs> yeah, because the points yeah, are automatic. Really awesome. <laughs> yeah, the conversion's yeah, so automatic. I've got a seven-pointer. <laughs> exactly. Feel good about it. 
That's pretty cool. No, it was well done. Yeah, that's a strength of the of rugby ATL, no doubt about it. Even early in the season when there was some trouble with the kicking game, gaining territory, and lineouts. Oh, we don't want to talk about lineouts. Um, uh, but but even even when even the, the team had trouble gelling early season, that mall has been impressive all season. I, I would have to say from my vantage point, uh, and I guess I'm a little biased because I've become a bit of a rugby ATL fan here. Uh, but um, I would have to say that, that the mall for for rugby ATL has been the most consistent, and it's been the one that's done the most for its team this year. You guys have really done a great job with that. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, we work hard at it, so try uh, and get it there. I mean, personally, I enjoy them more, so yeah, I love it. <laughs> cool. Well, I was always on the wing. I like running away from people so they can't tackle me. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I enjoy I enjoy it being in the middle, you know, why we play prop. Well, I was always too skinny and too short till I got older. Then I was taller. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, well, Vika, uh, thank, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure chatting with you today. Best of luck. Two games left. You're in the catbird seat, but you can't you can't take your foot off the gas. You got to win those two games, then win in the playoffs and maybe bring that silverware home. Robbie Petzer seems confident that you guys can do it. Oh, definitely. I mean, like we said, it's uh there's a very, 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 very long list of ingredients that goes into winning a championship. And uh, I think we're on the way of ticking the boxes, you know, going down the list and making sure we're ready. So hopefully we'll see what happens. I'm pretty confident, but uh, as I said, you never, you never, what's the word, cocky. You're confident, but not cocky. So. Yeah, that's what you want to avoid. You definitely don't want to be cocky. But I think with a coach like Scott Lawrence, uh, be you find it difficult to be cocky on that squad. <laughs> He'll cut you down pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, did you see the did you see the Eagles result against uh, England at Twickenham? Oh my goodness! Yeah, it was a huge game, eh? Definitely it was second I mean, half. It's was exciting. Incredible. It's like it's awesome and exciting to see that that the US guys are are you know getting into that. Uh, let's put it let's say into their groove, I guess, you know, getting, yeah. getting, everybody knows each other. They know they're trying to get the things going and yeah, it looks good. It's well, the, other, the other piece of that, that's really cool is that uh, now I was, I, I did live commentary of the game. Some of my, my channel people were watching while I reacted to it. And I was very critical in the first half. <laughs> but I mean, uh, probably a bit unfairly. I mean, it's been 20 months. Also, I mean, Gary Gold only had these guys for like three or four days to train together. Yeah. So, so I mean, that's given that reality. That was a hell of a performance. And and even even with the people go well, you know, the British and Irish Lions guys from South Africa. Yeah, but England is three and four deep at all those positions. So I mean, oh, yeah. So it was pretty incredible. <laughs> if you, I think if you go in the, like the top 20 nations in, in the world, they definitely, you, you can't say just because the British and Irish Lions are out that England's, you know, the next guy's just as good. I mean, yeah. he might be a bit younger, not as experienced or whatever, but I mean, those guys are playing for their country, same as you. So yeah, next man up and they're ready for it. Cool. Yeah, exactly. Well, listen, Vikas, uh, it's been a real pleasure chat with you today. Um, I do want to ask one final question before you go. USA. <laughs> Any surprises when you came here? Anything to adjust to or anything that you particularly find interesting you like? Hmm. Uh, obviously, well, at this point in time, when I got you, the driving is, everybody obviously says that the driving on the wrong side of the road and all that. But <laughs> the weird thing happening to me now is my friends and family would send me pics from home. And then I'd be like, well, you're on the wrong side. Out of the you car. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'd say the food is amazing. The The just Atlanta itself has been awesome. Uh, the people here at ATL specifically, you know, it, 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 they've made it, they made an effort to, to really make you feel welcome and at home. And I, I've just loved everything about my experience so far. Honestly, I, I can't think of anything that's really bummed me out. I mean, obviously not having the family and the, and the, the girlfriend and all that, but it's just part of the, the road. Other than that, yeah, I'm loving this place. Awesome. <laughs> anyway, Vic is uh, bye bye donkey. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you very much. Have a good day. All right. Cheers.